The idea that I would like to explore here is that it was changes in attentional and working memory circuitry associated with object file formation, tracking, and object manipulation in our internal virtual reality that really set us on the road to our modern suite of symbolic and creative behaviors and powers. In particular, I would like to argue that the nature of object files changed because of changes in attentional circuitry permitting symbolic reference to be held in working memory. So, for example, while a monkey can represent a banana, even when it's no longer visible, it cannot take that banana to flexibly and symbolically point to or represent whatever it wants to have it represent, either in the world or in its memory. In that sense, a monkey would be inherently literal and non-symbolic. For a human, however, that banana could be taken to stand for or represent virtually anything at all. But let's take a step back and ask ourselves where the cognitive difference between us and a monkey lies. A monkey's working memory representation of a tree, for instance, presumably contains shape, location, and other basic information represented in different neural populations or maps, as well as other information that the monkey has learned to associate with this particular tree or trees in general. All types of information, however, are about the tree. A monkey's working memory representation is encapsulated in the sense that it cannot contain information about irrelevant objects or events. Working memory representation encapsulation presumably helps animals survive because irrelevant information is not represented, permitting the animal to remain undistracted and unconfused by matters irrelevant to survival and the matter at hand. Human working memory representations, in contrast, unlike monkey or dog working memory representations, can contain any information which can be attended or downloaded from memory into the working memory representation. As such, human working memory representations can enact truly cross-modular binding. Because any representation can be downloaded into the working memory representation of a tree, a tree can be taken to stand for my friend Bob if Bob and the tree occupy the same working memory representation or object file. This requires tagging the tree component of the working memory representation as real, that is, pointing to the world, and the Bob component as not real or referential, that is, pointing to a representation that need not be in the world. In the absence of such a reality tag, a person might take a tree to really be Bob. Cognitive modularity and encapsulation protect animal minds from cognitive confusion. That humans are prone to misrepresentation, psychosis, delusion, hallucination, insanity, and madness may be the price we pay for the cognitive freedom afforded by our cognitive demodularization. Whereas animals seem to be capable of internally modeling events that might happen or, or might have happened, humans go beyond this literal capacity to one of imagination that can model events and objects that could never happen and could never exist in the real world. Imagination became possible when arbitrary contents and operators could be downloaded to a common working memory representation. I argue that in our lineage, there was a breakdown of modularity in this volitional attention and working memory circuitry in the sense that operators from one module could now operate on the operands of another module that previously had been encapsulated and impenetrable to that operator. Mental operations were set free because of this breakdown of mental modularity. Previously encapsulated operators could now be volitionally applied to operands from other modules for which they had not necessarily evolved. You can think of an operand as a representation in working memory and an operator as a function that carries out an operation over that operand. Or you can think of operands or representations as the nouns of the mind and operations as the verbs of the mind. Take, for example, the operation of rotating something. We can apply mental rotation to just about any concrete thing that we can imagine. Now imagine that many such mental operators, previously dedicated to, say, motoric operations of the body in the real world, could be generalized to operations carried out inside our internal virtual reality of our imagination. Perhaps pattern operators specialized for visual processing could now be applied to the contents of our memories, and we would become aware of patterns in our life in a way that a modularly encapsulated mind, like that of a monkey or a dog, could not become aware of. How would the freeing of mental operators have altered the human imagination? Imagine a tree with wings. 
The representation of wings can be downloaded into the same working memory object file as is maintaining the representation of a tree. An operator that places one object onto another could then be accessed to create a new representation of a tree with wings. But even in the absence of any such attachment operation, both a tree and something else can be maintained in the same object file. That is, the human working memory representation of a tree can contain everything that a dog's would, plus information that has nothing to do with this particular tree or any tree. For example, a man looking at a tree can simply volitionally decide that it stands for his wife. This is accomplished by downloading representations of his wife into the working memory representation holding the tree information. In this way, humans could have become symbolic.